Hi there guys, my name is Bizzleberry and I'm a support main in League of Legends. I've hit Challenger a couple of times as support and as AD carry, and I've also hit this, this season, Season 8 at Master as support, and I primarily play support in 95% of my games unless I get auto filled into the AD carry role. This video is to help you understand what it is support in League of Legends, what kind of job and what you're kind of expected to do particularly as you're climbing up the ladder. So what is support in League of Legends? So generally you are a character or a champion that is involved massively in the early game to get your partner in lane ahead. So usually what happens is that you're with someone else on the bottom side of the map on, on the bot lane. And usually they are a ranged physical carry. The terms could be used are marksman, AD carry, ADC, but your primary objective is to get the ADC ahead and through the laning phase. If that doesn't work out, you have to try and get someone else in a different lane ahead, but we'll move on to that later on into the video. So the, one of the first things you want to do as a support is choose a starting item in for your laning phase. Now, different champions will require different starting items and it also sometimes depends on what champions you're up against. If you're going for a more passive laning phase and you don't want to be involved too much in those fights during the laning phase, Ancient Coin works really nicely. It has one of the highest gold generation in the entire game in terms of the support items and it's extremely safe. Coin pickup radius is kind of large so you're able to take coins fairly easily. The Spell Thief's Edge is the complete opposite. It's you are forced to harass the enemy as much as possible to generate gold, but you have got the added benefit of that your spells and abilities and auto attacks will do a little bit more damage when you do those trades. And then finally we have Reddit Shield. Personally I feel it's the weakest one of the three, but most of the melee supports will want to take this as it is very easy to guarantee that your AD carry gets kind of minions. So, what kind of supports are there and what should you play? This is a very common question that gets asked on my Twitch stream. Bizzleberry, what support should I play to help climb myself up in high to high ELA? Well, firstly, there's three different types of support champions to play. You've got your hard engage, so something like a Leona or an Alistair or a Thresh or a Blitzcrank. Basically, someone who starts the fight instantly. They go straight in, and sometimes it's extremely difficult for them to get out, but every time they go in, expect a big play to happen. Now, you've got your poke champions, which are more of like your traditional mid lane mages that you may see. But some of those champions could include Zyra, Velkoz, Zeref brand. These are all champions with extremely high magic damage and don't rely too much on XP and have very nice base damages in lane and generally have some form of hard CC or a lot of CC in their kit to help them set up kills for the mid game. And then finally you have sustain slash peel. So champions such as Janna or Nami would fall into this category where they have a very high amounts of sustain in lane and if things start going bad or if you start getting ganked by enemy junglers the peel starts to come in an effect where basically that means that you are taking away the pressure from the enemy champions from getting onto yourself and your AD carry to create help create that extra distance between the enemy and your squishy targets. Now which of one of those you should be playing in lane comes down to champion selection and also how good you are at mechanically at League of Legends. There are a few champions in League that are very mechanically intensive. Usually most of the engaged champions are right top, right at the top of mechanics required to be able to play the champions quite well. So champions like Thresh and Pike require extensive knowledge about how much damage you are going to take and how to uh, engage properly onto the enemy support. And usually that's entwined as well with being able to land skill shots as well. There's gonna be critical moments in during the laning phase where you're gonna to have to make sure that you land those crucial spells, otherwise 
you're missing out on a couple of kills for your team, which can change the game. Now, if your mechanics aren't as, as high up, then maybe something towards the peel slash sustain may suit you better. Janna is extremely easy to play, and Sona as well doesn't really require many mechanics. But you have to be on your toes still. You are a little bit more fragile than some of the other supports, and if you do get caught out, you're very easy to kill. However, if you play smart in lane, and you don't, you're not the first one to go in, it's not too mechanically intensive. A lot of the spells are generally point and click, or in Sona's case, for example, just click. And you can have a lot of impact just by learning how to play the map and how, learning how to where to ward and things like this, and which we'll go into a little bit later. And then finally, you've got the mage. I would say it's a fair balance between mechanics and knowing exactly what the pressure is in bot lane. Mages are extremely squishy in lane, so if you do get caught out similar to the poke sustain, you will likely die or have to use a couple of summoners to escape. However, if you are the one to make to catch out the enemy, it's going to be a lot of damage. And some of also these champions as well, such as the Zyra and Brand, have a lot of neutral objective power, such as on the Dragon, Herald and Baron, which will help increase your ch team's chance of doing those objectives. And if you're feeling a lot more conf confident in your macro play as well, you can even call for those objectives or so in some cases do them yourself. So. What is the easiest way of improving your support play? I've done about 25 to 30, 30 coaching sessions over the last couple of months. Everything from bronze to low diamond. And in the overwhelming majority of cases, macro is the biggest problem that I see. I'm actually genuinely quite surprised at how good some people are mechanically in the lower ELOs, such between bronze and, and gold. Sure, you miss a couple of hooks, but you're not expected to land 100% of your hooks, for example, every single time. But the main flaw in anyone between bronze and gold, from what I've observed, is macro is a huge issue. Now, we've talked about macro a couple of times in this video already. So if you're not familiar with the term macro, basically it involves map pressure and how you move your team around the map to take objectives. So this could be for Dragon, or for Herald, or for Towers. But the main thing is, is that you're constantly getting your team to do objectives rather than chasing down kills constantly, which sometimes can be a challenging task as a support. But if you take one of the slightly more macro champions, and if you're very good at macro, someone like a Zyra or a Brand, for example, in the mage category, they can start doing those dragons with and with only with one other person usually is a quick take as well so that's something to bear in mind if you're having a lot of trouble in terms of macro in your games so how to work on your macro now the easiest way to get you to start thinking about macro is there are two questions that you may need to ask yourself and generally in league there are a lot of little questions you should be asking yourself and as you get higher in elo these questions will be automatically answered for you in your head. You'll work them out naturally. But as you're in lower ELO, if you are watching this and you are in lower ELO, these questions are things that you're gonna have to make sure you keep asking yourself. Maybe even have a post-it note and stick it next to your monitor. Just have a couple of questions there that you should be asking yourself regularly. The first question is, what is the easiest objective for my team to take? Now, at five minutes in the game, that might be kind of a silly question, but it should be a question you should be asking. Is mid tower suddenly on half HP? Could that be a possible push? Do they have someone that can clear out the waves quickly in that mid lane to, to, pre to prevent us from pushing it down that mid tower quite early? Is dragon viable? Is it an important dragon as well? If ocean drake can be particularly useful early. And to be honest, any drake is early, it early is an added benefit for a team. Is, is that a possibility? Sometimes the answer is no, there is no easy objective to take. So you need to take a step back and then think about what is the easiest objective for the enemy to take? Now, this isn't a question that many people actually ask themselves, particularly when you're behind as well. People don't expect or try to guess what the, the enemy are going to be doing, not anticipating their next move. So what is, if you are behind, what is the 
easiest objective for the enemy to take? What are they likely to go for? Could your bot lane be a little bit weaker than the rest so that could expose Dragon quite easily? Or is your top lane getting crushed? That means Harold might be take, getting, getting taken quite soon. Now, there are a couple of things you can do macro-wise to help influence your play. Say, for example, in the top lane scenario, your bot lane support, and your jungler has been doing okay, and you're doing okay bot side, but your top lane, solo lane, is getting crushed. Get as a support to help assist the top lane, it's going to be pretty difficult to roam up, especially if you aren't a roaming champion. So what can we do about this? Well, we've already established that the bot lane and your jungler are ahead. So maybe start setting up the dragon. Next time the enemy jungler goes up to the top side and ganks, you've got more, uh, more higher number of players of, uh, you've got a better player advantage on bot side to be able to take the next dragon. So start getting vision around there. Or for example, the tier one bot's about to go down soon. Start getting adequate vision to anticipate if the jungler's gonna come down or the mid enemy mid lane is gonna roam down to try and prevent that and trying to secure that tier one for the first tower but So all of these things are anticipation and predicting what the next enemy moves are gonna to be to try and stop you from making a move or to try and guess what the enemy is going to te take next. And in the overwhelming majority of cases, vision is the main problem and the main way for the enemy to take the objective. So you need to try and guess and be very and have high anticipation for these objectives that are going to be taken and get the air rewarded, get dragon warded, get the brushes warded ahead for the tower so you can get ticket down. Or if they're the enemy are planning to take a dragon for themselves, try and get a, a couple of wards around in the area. You may not be able to stop the dragon, but at least you'll know that when they are taking it and where the jungler is, and it might give your jungler an opportunity to maybe invade a couple of camps or even take uh, the 2v1 opportunity topside. So the more information that you can give your team, the better chance you'll have of anticipating and making moves yourself. So we've established that macro is very crucial to support play. So getting vision around those objectives is, is nice, but also you need to be buying control wards. That's one of the most important thing in, the, in that vision category is control wards. Also when evaluating and watching people's, uh, watching people's games during my coaching sessions, they generally don't buy control wards and they say they do, but they honestly don't. In a 30 minute game, you're looking at at least on average six control wards. You can quickly check this on your OPGG and it will say straight away how many control wards you have purchased that game. And that's a very clear indicator on how good you are vision wise. Forget about the built in vision score. I want you to focus on getting control wards and making sure that you have the area sorted out and make sure that you have guaranteed vision denial for the enemy. So what that means is if you have a controlled in a brush, they do, the enemy does not know what is in that brush, which is a lot of information for you and it takes away a lot of information for the enemy. The enemy is always going to have to be in the back foot wondering, oh, could the jungler be there? And the same with normal wards as well. If you've got some crazy weird ward placements, Sometimes having random wards placed does give you a lot of information because it tells you where the enemy is not. So it gives you information of where the enemy could be, which can be quite powerful, especially when anticipating jungle gangs during learning phase and into the early, game, uh, early mid game as well. One of the other questions you should be asking yourself is what kind of items should I be buying throughout the game? Identify how many people on the enemy team are physical and magic and try and weigh that up. For example, some team comps are pure physical. So there's no point going any ma magic res resistance or you can maybe go very little if it's combined in an item that you are really wanting to take, such as in the Thieves Unholy Grail on Nami, you will be picking up a tiny bit of magic resistance, but which will generally be kind of weak, but the item itself is very strong. But try not to build towards item paths where you're gonna get little defensive value from in particular. So if they are a mixed team, look for those mixed resistance items like a Zeke's or an Aegis, something we've combined as well. And don't forget about HP as well, particularly if you're in a tanky 
support as well because your effective health will be actually quite low if you only purely go for resistances and you don't have any HP. So think ahead what kind of items you need to take. If you need advice on what kind of items to take, feel free to ask on Discord or leave a comment on the section below and I can maybe guide you in that right direction. But there are also websites out there that will allow you to give you an indication where to go, such as Pro Builds. You're sure you'll be able to find it on Google. Just type it, type in the champion name. You'll come across a list of what are the more common items are taken on certain champions. And I'm sure there's other websites out there as well, which will give you a lot of information about what items are generally taken on supports. Um, and but also the main main thing as well I see as well is people take they they take a build they've got a build, and they stick with it constantly. In the case of resistances as well, there's no taking magic resistance if possible if they have physical damage, um, but you'll still go and take that that magic resistance because you're hard set in that build. So always try and change it up. Think about what kind of items I should be taking first. So for example, on a enchanter peel support, you don't always want to go Ardent Sensor first, especially if you haven't got a heavy auto attack champion on your team. Sometimes it's better to go Unholy Grail or take the Redemption first. Sometimes you might not even need the Ardent Sensor in the first place because you haven't got many auto attack champions on your team at all. So it would be a wasted item, which you could be taking a more utility item such as Twin Shadows or taking a little bit more AP for your, your team just to do a little bit more damage yourself or even just stop piling on control wards so you're not wasting that slot. So the main key information on item builds is change it up. Make sure you're thinking constantly each game what kind of items you should be taking in that game. Now laning phase. There, because there's so many support champions in the game, laning phase can vary quite a lot. And it also depends on what the enemy jungler is as well. And how many teleports the enemy team has as well. These are all questions you need to ask yourself. Is the enemy likely going to be teleporting down? Are we going to get level 2 cheese gank by the enemy jungler? Once again, vision is key to helping you give you information about these possibilities. Sometimes there's nothing you can do. Sometimes it's better to leave, let the tier 1 tower go down so that he frees you up to roam around the map. And also maybe let your AD carry farm at that tier 2 tower a little bit more safely. Because the enemy would have to go a lot deeper into your side of the base and it gives you more your team more time to react. But your main goal during laning phase is to get ahead early. Supports are very, very good early game because everyone else is on the same level and gold as you. So no one's gone back to buy items. You're still on the same amount of gold count as everyone else in the entire game. You're the same level as everyone else in the entire game as well. So you're not falling off on that power spike. So the supports are the strongest actually in the first six or so levels in the game. You can make the biggest impact and your damage values are the strongest at this point in the game, unless you're playing a mage and you start securing a lot of kills. The, the amount of impact you'll have in the game in terms of these little small skirmishes as a support is, is huge. Because support has a lot of power early, it doesn't always mean you have to use everything all the time. The best example I can give you for this is Blitzcrank. And say you're Blitzcrank versus a Morgana. Morgana has a spell shield that can block the Blitzcrank's hook and effectively make him do nothing in lane. Now sometimes it's better for Blitzcrank to not hook. This may seem really crazy, but sometimes it is the better play. If you use a very high cooldown ability, for in this case it's Blitzcrank, around, his Q is around a 20 second cooldown, it gives the enemy 20 seconds to make a play before your hook comes up. And this is also, you can use this information on the reversal as well. So if Blitzcrank misses a hook, the only thing he can do is come up to melee range and knock you up. You should use this information as a great tool to know when to go in and harass. So cooldown management in lane is paramount to doing well as a support. And knowing the cooldowns of the enemy supports is also paramount to be able to accomplish this goal. So in the Blitzcrank Q example, if the Blitzcrank misses his hook, he effectively can't really do anything 
So that's when it's your opportunity is to start harassing both of them, the enemy AD carry and the enemy support. Until the blitzcrank hook starts coming off cooldown, then you back off at a safer distance and then wait for the next mistake. League of Legends is generally a game of mistakes. Sometimes going in and making the play is the mistake itself. So always bear that in mind. Sometimes it is hard being patient and waiting for the enemy mistake, but identifying each little mistake that the enemy makes is crucial in, able to win, in enabling yourself to win those games. And that's just the most basic example, that, that an easy to understand example of the Blitzcrank queue. But there are many supports out there and there's lots of cooldowns that you need to learn. Blitzcrank Q, Morgana Binding, even though Morgana's Spell Shield has a very long cooldown in itself, Morgana's wasted her Spell Shield, it's your time to engage on the, on the enemy, there's very little that she can do to help prevent you from going in at that point. Same with Fresh, Fresh's Hook. The list goes on and on, every support has a cooldown weakness. And lastly, very important as well during the laning phase, Guess where the enemy jungler is. Now, for example, if your enemy bot lane is straight away in the laning phase, level one, pushing in that first wave when you're still helping pull for your jungler, it means it's likely that the enemy jungler has started on the opposite side of the map, which means that they'll be working, making their way over to the bottom side of the buff, and then they'll make a play either to, to mid lane or bot lane. So that gives you a little window knowing that around level three, maybe even level two, depending on the jungle's pathing, but generally level three is when you're going to start seeing the enemy jungler. So you're around level two, ideally you want to start searching out wards in the, in the river to be able to anticipate the jungle gank. And we're back to that again, anticipation, guessing what the enemy are going to be doing. That is your primary role as support. Well, there to anticipate the enemy's move. And now we're entering mid game. Mid game little team fights can happen. And now that's when your role and what champion you've taken is going to be coming in fully into effect. Has your AD carry been doing really well throughout the game? You may want to stay with them to encourage them to carry through mid game. Sometimes games have been going really badly, but you've got that one person in your team that's been doing well. Maybe it's that Riven top lane that's been doing extremely well. And everyone on your t else on your team have been kind of duds, to be honest. The best move would be to follow the Riven around because you're not going to be able to support any of them effectively apart from the Riven that wish you can then provide appropriate vision for the Riven for when she wants to maybe split push if that's her mentality and maybe you can play it back so maybe you could bait it so that the uh, two enemies try and gank on the Riven you show up and you make it an easy 2v2 for you, you, to, you two to win. Sometimes it's worth sacrificing something to make sure that someone else can carry through the mid game to ensure that you win the game. Another thing to regard around mid game is getting vision around Baron. One common mistake as a support is to face check brushes and almost Leroy in straight in and get vision and then try and get out again but the enemy have already set up a trap because they've already, already cleared up the vision around the Baron. Sometimes you will need your team nearby and sometimes you need to get the, ideally the, the, the jungle or the top lane or whatever bruiser or tank that if you have them on your team to face check those objectives for you to be able to, you, to give you appropriate vision. There are control wards that you can place down in your own brushes on your side of the map before entering Baron to help the enemy not see you get ready to go into the brush so it's harder for them to anticipate you coming in to clear it out but as you become higher and higher and higher up in ELO these baron traps and dragon traps become more and more frequent so be aware of that and also fast sight trinkets as well encourage your team to take fast sight trinkets so that you personally don't have to start face checking brushes for baron and, and dragons particularly when you're behind as well so hopefully this video gives you a slightly better idea of what your job is as a support in a League of Legends. So there's a lot of question asking, a lot of anticipation that needs to be made, and a lot of vision. But as soon as you identify what the enemy is going to take or what you need to take in terms of objectives, games start being a little bit quicker. You get to start securing those objectives more often for your team to take. 
And generally, it should increase your win rate quite a bit early on if your macro has been particularly bad. A lot of players mistake that mechanics is more important than being able to play the map. And that's why they find themselves hard stuck where they are. If you start focusing on going for the objectives and for macro plays rather than the montage ELO, high ELO plays that you may see on YouTube, you start to find yourself climbing up higher and higher and higher. And that's when, when you get to high ELO, like diamond, mid diamond, into masters, mechanics then become much more important. But if you're someone that's looking to get to gold and plat, you can do very well with the lower mechanical champions, but with amazing macro. And just keep thinking ahead. What can you do in the game? Hopefully this video helped you out. If you liked the video, thumbs up. Please subscribe as well if you're interested in support content in particular as well. I do coaching sessions every week on my stream on twitch.tv slash bizzleberry. I upload them onto YouTube so you guys can learn a little bit more about each individual champion as support. And I upload support gameplay videos as well. And hopefully we should have some more support lessons like this over the coming months. Hopefully we can get you your gold rewards for the end of the season. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Goodbye.